Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse has some crazy reviews. I just finished watching it, so here's my spoiler-free review. This thing expands on the Spider-Man mythos in ways that we didn't even think possible. Not only does it build upon the success of its predecessor into the Spider-Verse, this project is setting a new standard for both animated and superhero films in general, capitalizing directly on innovative storytelling, some powerful character arcs, and an overwhelmingly amazing visual style. Everybody's gonna tell you that this is an audio-visual spectacle, so what exactly made this film special? Starting off with the plot of the films without any spoilers, this is a masterstroke of creativity. It incorporated classic sci-fi elements like time travel, multiple universes, and the concept of destiny. On the surface, it sounds super deep and complex, but it was super accessible. That, my friends, is due to the amazing relationships that we build between the spider people, particularly Gwen, Peter B., Miles, and Miguel O'Hara. Every single one of these characters is presented with complex depth and a desire to do what's right in their own moral compass. The best part is all of them face deeply rooted personal challenges, questioning not only their position in the spider society and the spider-verse as a whole, but what does it mean to be a superhero? Do I really want to do this? At what point does my desire to do good conflict with my moral compass? The best part is that this not only shows up in the dialogue, but it also extends to the action set pieces, which are borderline perfection, which leads us directly into the cinematic style, the artistic vision, and of course, the visuals. The use of different color palettes and different visual storytelling styles for every universe, and in turn, for every spider person associated with said universe, adds a lot of context and depth to the world building. The film utilizes the strengths on the visual side to present a cohesive and relatable story effectively. Speaking about multiple universes, uh, let's talk about what you all came to see. What is up with the spider people? As we knew from the trailers, this film introduces the concept of the spider society. A huge huge conflict on Earth 928, which is Miguel O'Hara's universe, which houses all of the different Spider-Men across the universe. It gave us a direct opportunity to see interactions between Spider-People of the movies, the video games, the TV shows, and the animated series. It was exciting, it gave us the possibility of seeing different storylines in multiple different projects, but the best part, at least to me, is the fact that the people from the Spider-Verse that did talk didn't seem like meaningless cameos. Okay, yes, I do agree that some of the characters didn't get the love and care that they deserved. Yes, I'm looking at you, Ben Riley. Each one of them has different perspectives upon what is good and what is right in the context of the film's plot. Every single one of their decisions has a consequence. And not only that, their interactions with the main characters of this movie affect the overall plot and the narrative as a whole. Through their shenanigans, we land at the core theme of this movie, that being Spider-Man requires intense sacrifices. Specifically when it comes to the introduction of canon events, which you will see in the movie, you touch upon the themes of responsibility, guilt, identity and family in ways that I have never seen in another animated superhero film. When it comes to the things that I like the most is the fact that every single spider person is characterized in a very specific way relating to their universe and the relationship that they build with the other spider people. It's impressive to see a studio that took so long and multiple delays to make this movie succeed at almost every single technical level. The movie is borderline perfect, but there are some criticisms on the internet which I will relate to you and I will let you pick which one is right. Number one, the movie is too long. The runtime of this bad boy is around 2 hours and 20 minutes, and honestly, I don't agree with this one because I could have watched 5 hours of this shit and be perfectly Gucci. Number 2. It's banking on the concept of the multiverse to create a spider-verse adjacent to it, and it just seems reductive. Uh, I don't agree with that. I found it extremely innovative to add the fact that in every universe, there is a specific spider-person, which in turn affects their own specific section of the multiverse. Number 3. This thing is just suffering from sequelitis, and it's just trying to bank on the visual artistry of the first one to bring a little bit more flair to the second part and just do a cash grab for part three. And that, my friends, is where we're drawing a line in the fucking sand because I do not agree with that. I will grant you, this movie introduces a lot of new elements that might have confused people that didn't necessarily love the first one. But the core narrative thread persists from part one and part two, and it sets up part three in a beautiful manner. There's a strong emotional core between Gwen and Miles, which both feel like co-protagonists in the story. It didn't feel like that in the first one. And overall, Across the Spider-Verse is a successful expansion of the universe, not only within the context of Spider-Man, but it adds possibilities for the live-action universe as well. I will agree with one of the criticisms. Yes, Into the Spider-Verse was a tad bit better at closing off a loop on a single cohesive narrative better than this one, but that is mostly due to the fact that this is clearly intended to be a setup movie for Beyond the Spider-Verse, which we will see next year. But I love this thing from start to finish. I am a huge Spider-Man fan, and I'm 
I'm gonna give it a solid A. 10 out of 10, would recommend. It's a cliche adage, but you've seen the review already. You get exactly what I'm saying, Papa. I'm gonna be in the comments waiting for you to let me know. Do you think this movie was worth the hype? Did you like it? What parts did you not enjoy? And of course, if you're looking for more pop culture content, this video somewhere on the screen is gonna talk to you about One Piece and the new Netflix adaptation that's happening for that. And below that is a pretty saucy review of the movie Tetris. So I'll see you there.